All right, with zero ado, um, I forgot I said I was going to do this today. I was just reminded that I said I was going to do this today because I'm not supposed to be talking. My voice is, is in bad shape, um, but I said I would do it, so I'm going to do it. So here we go to uh, round four. I'm going to sound less excited because I'm trying to talk quietly. So here we go, row four of my music collection. I'm going to go through it real quick. I don't know. I haven't looked at it, so here we go. Judge me all you like. I don't care. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Um, uh, we left off at Gray White, so let's pick back up a Gray White. Why not, right? Let's see how long it takes. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Great White. Um, here. We started here. So I don't have their first record, but I got that one. Love that one. Listened to this one to death when I was a kid. Uh, but not as much as I listened to this one. one of, this is just just by just because of when it came out. This was a big record for me. I had it on tape and listened to it over and over and over again. I know this record very very well. Uh, so my great white. I remember I was kind of disappointed with that one, but still some good stuff. So great white. Here we go. More great white. Great white. Jack Russell, one of the greatest singers ever. This one was produced by Jack uh, Blades. Uh, okay, moving on. Gretchen Peters. Gretchen Peters wrote "The Secret of Life" that was covered by Faith Hill. Great song. Great. Uh, I don't. I've never listened to these yet. I only have these two Gretchen Peters records. But uh, oh, wait. Sorry. These two Gretchen Peters records. That's all I got. Moving on. Hailstorm. Oh my God. Listen. If you like the rock music, the Hailstorm. I uh, a friend of a friend was playing this in her car once, and I was like, "Who is that?" Because I was listening to the first couple songs on here. Um, uh, I get off and bet you wish him. It was just great. This record is really, really good. Love that one. Not as good as this one. This one's awesome. This is a great, great album. It's good to see a rock band still out there doing it. They won a Grammy for this record, I think. Um, love the first two. I was one of the few that was incredibly disappointed in this one. I didn't like this at all. I liked, like, Apocalyptic was the only song I liked. I didn't like that record at all. I was really surprised how much I didn't like it. Uh, moving on to Hall & Oates. There's nothing I can say about Hall & Oates that you don't already know. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, what am I going to say? I'm just going to show you my Hall & Oates records. Um, by the way, this one, uh, that So Close, that's one of my favorite songs of all time. I love that So Close song. Um, but yeah, more Hall & Oates. I don't actually have all the Hall & Oates stuff. I'm going to get it eventually. Uh, Hanson, listen, you're going to judge me, and I understand you're going to judge me. Hanson is an incredible band. They, I'm a harmony junkie and a hook junkie, and I'm telling you, this stuff is amazing. If you know nothing about Hanson, they got a documentary called Strong Enough to Break that was made when they were making their third record, how they went back and forth with the record company, and they wouldn't accept the material and go do it again, do it again. They wrote with Carol King. It was a huge struggle, and it was all filmed because they were just going to film the uh, making of the record, but it ended up being a documentary about them, and they, they broke off from the record label and started their own, and it was it's really, really good and inspiring and good stuff. I'm telling you, these, these guys are the real deal. Good. Ba this is a great, great, great album. And this, oh, not that. This is a great, great album. It really is. If you have only, if you only know Oom Bop and that's all you know, and you're judging them on one song, pfft, you don't know anything about them. You got to give them a chance, man. Great hooks, great harmonies, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, these, and then they started producing their own records. And then it started to kind of go downhill. I don't really care for that too much. See, these last two they produced on their own, and they don't really do much for me, so they need to get a producer back. Danny Korchmar produced this one, by the way. Uh, Hardline. Uh, everyone knows Hardline, right? There's my Hardline collection. I got that one, I got this one, and I got that one. I don't have a new one yet. Harem Scarum. Don't even know where to talk about it. Start on Harem Scarum. I mean, I'm just, you know who they are or you don't. If you don't know who they are, they're a Canadian band, really good hard rock stuff. I always felt they were kind of like extreme a little bit. I mean... Uh, they definitely have that extreme, Pete, I can't say his, his name right, Pete Lesperance has, definitely has that Nuno Betancourt guitar sound, tone to his guitar. Uh, look Up No Justice by Harem Scarum, that's not their second record, or their first, second record. Awesome. Um, but here's my Harem Scarum stuff. It's kind of hit and miss with me, but they're incredibly prolific and they never stopped. And I know that a lot of the hardcore fans are going to not appreciate this, but this is my favorite Harem Scarum record. It's almost Def Leppard. It's basically Def Leppard record to me. Love this album. Love everything about this record. It's awesome. Good, good album. Um, look up the song Higher. Look up anything on this record. It's awesome. 
More harem scarum. More harem scarum. Ah. Uh, all right, moving on. Harry Connick. You got This is my favorite Christmas album of every Christmas album ever. This is my favorite one. Um, love this album. This album is Christmas to me. I discovered it when I was 25 and uh, love it. Um, let's move on. Harry Connick again. Don't have a lot of his stuff. Heart. I go through the heart catalog. I know a lot of people love the 70s heart. I do like the 70s heart, but the. 80s heart is more my kind of stuff when it started here with the more polished sound. I think it was Ron Nevison, right? Yeah, Ron Nevison started producing and just bringing in, I'm sorry, but bringing in outside riders and making everything sound very sleek. Love it. Love Bad Animals. This is my favorite heart record. I know everybody thinks it's lightweight, but it's Richie Zito produced, right? Richie Zito produced. Um, can't focus on that. Sorry, it doesn't matter. Uh, the song All I Want to Do Is Make Love... I can't focus on anything today. The song All I Want to Do Is Make Love To You is on here, which was written by Mutt Lang, Shania Twain's husband, Mutt Lang, the guy who wrote everything. He wrote that song. Uh, this is good, too. Very good. Um, got that. Uh, the new Heart record, Beautiful Broken, is in the other room. I haven't put it on the shelf yet. There's Heart. Uh, heat. I have all the Heat records. This is my favorite one. Great, great stuff. Uh, this is very... To me, it's kind of a wigwam and Def Leppard, and it's good. That's a really, really good one. I like that one a lot. Uh, this one was good, too. Oh, heart, I got another heart one. Oh, that's in the wrong place. Well, let's fix that. That goes here. Uh, <laughs> soundtrack from the Heights. <laughs> I've had this forever. There's actually a couple of great songs on here. Uh, Natalie is a great song. Joanne's a great song. Um, some good stuff on there. I got uh, How Do You Talk to an Angel. That's what's on there. Um, Jamie... Jamie Walters is on there. Um, and he's got a great, great voice. I got a couple of his records, but we haven't gotten there yet. Halloween. Oh, my God. Hebrew to Seven Keys Part 1 and 2 are some of my favorite records ever. I still want albums like this. I still want to find stuff just like this. Love these records. Listen to This is the second record I ever bought in my life. The second one ever. C CD. CD that I bought. And I listened to this to death. Oh my god, so good! And I got the remasters of both one and two. Chameleon didn't like it. That one had a couple good songs. Time of the Oath. Now we get into like the Roland Grappau version of uh, I can't say his name right of Halloween. I just don't like it. I'm sorry, I don't like it. Can't. I, I have it. And I stopped. I stopped after this. I didn't get any more. Henry Lee Summer. Anybody know Henry Lee Summer? I wish I had a girl. Great song. Um, this is my Henry Lee Summer collection. Uh, here's Harry Hess. He's a singer for uh, Harem Scaring that we talked about down there. So Harem Hess. I bought this. Haven't listened to it yet. This I have because this is an album of one of the songs that um, plays at Epcot before Illuminations is on here. So that's why I have this. I haven't listened to it yet. Hooters' Nervous Night. That song And We Dance is on here. And We Dance. Like a video. And Day by Day. Great song also. Uh, I haven't listened to that record in like 20 years. I don't remember if it's any good. Hope. This is a one-off album by a band called Hope, called All of My Days. If you like Brian Adams, get this. It's like Brian Adams' little brother. It's not as good as Brian Adams, but it sings a. It sounds a lot like Brian Adams. I mean, it's just it's just guys trying to be Brian Adams. It is. It's good, but that is what you're getting. You're getting the lightweight Brian Adams stuff. Good stuff though. House of Lords. I bought this album. This was my first House of Lords record. I bought. Based on nothing but the cover. I got this a day after I graduated high school. And it was, I was in the record store and I saw the cover and went, what's that? And I flipped over and went, Tommy Aldridge is in this band. Well, I don't know who this is, but there's Tommy Aldridge. I recognize his face and look at that cover and I bought it. That's all I had to know. Bought it. So I've gone back and got, this is my favorite one. No, it's not. I'm sorry. This is my favorite one. Great, great keyboard melodic rock stuff. Uh, I don't. I know everybody loves Sahara. I don't like Sahara. Sorry. I even went back and gave it another chance about a year ago. I, I listened to the whole thing. It was like it still didn't move me. Uh, rem remember my name is beautiful, and that's and Kiss of Fire is awesome, but that's kind of it uh, for me. Uh, there you go. More House of Lords Part Two. House of Lords. I got big money. Big money. Oh, that is big money. All right. Moving on. Huey Lewis. Oh man, Huey Lewis. I, again, I can't tell anything about Huey Lewis you don't already know, other than the guy's got an incredible, unique voice, great singer, great band, great radio songs with some interesting arrangements and chords in them. 
just a great all-around band with harmonies and hooks and real musicians. This is a record they put out a, a, a little after everybody stopped listening. But one of my favorite songs of all time is on here. We're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. How cool is that? What a great song. Awesome. Hugo. If you don't know who Hugo is, you might be thinking, that guy looks like Steve Perry. Yeah, well, he sounds like Steve Perry also. Eerily like Steve Perry. So if you're a huge Steve Perry junkie and you don't know what this is I'm holding, you might want to try to track this down. Guy's name is Hugo. That's all it is. Hugo. And it's not as good as Journey, but nothing else. But it's almost creepy. That's the only one of his thing I have. Um, there's that one. You know who you are. Uh, I have the Hunchback of Notre Dame soundtrack. Yes, I do. Actually, Hunchback of Notre Dame's got movie has great music in it. Great music. The Bells of Notre Dame is such a great piece. I love it. Uh, Hurricane. Here's another example of an album I bought based on nothing but the cover. I knew nothing about this band. I saw the cover, and I went, I might like that, and I bought it. Love the song Rain of Love and uh, Smiles Like a Child. Awesome. Uh, her, all I have is uh, of Hurricane is that one and this one. That's all I have. I know I should have more, but I don't. Hush. This is a one-off that I bought. I don't remember anything about it. I don't know why I have it. I don't know where I got it. I just bought it a long time ago. Don't can't tell anything about it. There you go. I do her above the law. Mm -hmm. uh, this I bought because I was at a record store with my brother, and it was so ridiculous. Just the look of it was so ridiculous, and it was so cheap. I realized that I needed to buy it just so I had it to remember how me and my brother were laughing at this, how it's ridiculous. And I thought, watch me buy it, and it's incredible. And I bought it, and I listened to it, and it's not incredible. It's pretty crappy. Iron Maiden. I came to the Iron Maiden party late, so I don't have a lot of their stuff. I only started listening to them about a year and a half ago, but these are the Iron Maiden records that I have. I've only listened to three of them. Um, I have like six. I've listened to what I was told. I listened to this one, like it. Listen to this one, really like it. Listen to this one, my favorite. There's my Iron Maiden collection. I'll get to more eventually, maybe. Uh, Jack Blades. Uh, he put out a couple solo records. The singer-songwriter from uh, Night Ranger. If you know me, you should know this. Jack Blades. His solo stuff is not as strong. I wish it were stronger, but it's not. But there's some good songs in here. Alone Tonight is a great song with uh, written with Neil Sean. And uh, Top of the World is a great song. Um, there's that. And then I got this one. Didn't love it, but... Hang on, i got to adjust myself. There we go. All right. Didn't love it, but it did the trick. A couple good songs on here. Um, but overall, this one was kind of... A little too rootsy for me. Um, Jack Russell, speaking of Great White earlier, Jack Russell, one of the greatest, most pure, beautiful voices. This is his solo record. Is this his only solo record? Does anybody know? I don't know. Good stuff, though. Very more, kind of more poppy than uh, the Great White stuff, but I really did enjoy this. There's my Jackson Brown collection. I don't have much to say about this because I haven't listened to any of it. I own it, and I bought it over the years, and haven't listened to any of it. James Christian, the lead singer from House of Lords we were talking about earlier. What a great voice that guy's got. I love that man's voice. He can sing anything. Uh, I remember a song. I love the song Katie. Best Girl's a great song. You know, again, I could give these like a long explanation, but I'm trying to run through them real quick. Jamie Cullum, screw that guy. He's incredibly talented. I hate everything about him because I love everything about him. Ugh. Oh, Jamie Walters. Here's what we were talking about earlier with the Heights soundtrack. This guy has a beautiful, beautiful voice. Uh, Hold On was a small hit. I don't actually like most of the songs on here. Hold On was good. Perfect World was good. But his second record, Ride, has some good stuff on it. Uh, Fly On Sweet Angel, When Known is a good song. The Other Side. The Other Side is one of my favorite songs ever. The Other Side by Jamie Walters. I really do love that song. Then he put something else out a few years later. This was okay. There's some good stuff on here. And I think that's it. Has he done anything since then? Because I would buy it. I would just buy it. The guy's got a great voice. I bought this. Still haven't listened to it. But I love the song Black Cat. Black Cat's a great song. I don't care who you are. Black Cat is an awesome song. And I believe, I might be mistaken, Black Cat's the only song that Janet Jackson wrote on that record by herself. And it's a great song. Black Cat's a killer song. And uh, I think Vernon Reed from Living Color plays the guitar on that. Is that right? I think he does. Danny Lame, the lead singer from Warrant. This is his only solo record, I believe, right? Other than that covers thing he did. And I still haven't listened to it, so I can't comment on this. Jan Arden, I only own this because of the song Insensitive, which is a beautiful, heartbreaking song that was out in the 90s. I bought this record for that song, and it's the only song on this record she did not write. So I think they shoved it on here so that she could get a song on the radio. I'm just guessing. Cool song. 
Uh, the last one. Um, oh, no, not the last one. Uh, it looks like rain. Oh, Good Mother. Good Mother is a beautiful song. Those two, Good Mother and It Looks Like Rain, are really, really good, good songs. Um, let's move on. By the way, if anybody's commenting, I'm not ignoring you. I just cannot read the comments and respond and think about all this at the same time. So I'm not trying to be rude. I'll listen. I'll look. I'll watch back later and respond. I just don't. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't do that much at once. And I shouldn't be talking. Janet Arden's follow-up record. I never listened to it. I don't know. Jarrett and the Long Road Home. All right. This guy was half of Evan and Jaren, which I talked about earlier. Evan and Jaren, I love them. I love Evan and Jaren. They did some really good stuff that nobody's heard. I bought this record. It's got that song Pray For You that was on the radio about five, six years ago. Uh, this, album, that's, this album has a song called That's Beautiful To Me. That's a good song. The rest of these are not good. Didn't like it, but that's who that is. I got a Jefferson Starship collection that I haven't listened to yet with more of the obscure stuff. I don't think I'm even going to like it, to be honest. I like more of the Starship era, but I got it anyway just to get it. This is uh, something that was a gift. I haven't listened to it yet. Jellyfish. Either you know about Jellyfish or you don't. Who knows Jellyfish? This is really... I don't even know where to start on this. I'm just going to move on. Uh, Jennifer Nettles. Did anybody know that Jennifer Nettles had her own records before she was in Sugarland? This album, I am not, listen, this album, Gravity Drag Me Down by Jennifer Nettles, is the most, the most of everything I've ever listened to in my life, the most schizophrenic record I've ever heard, ever. It's very interesting to listen to it before Sugarland because the first song is, I can't remember them all exactly, Gravity, I'm telling you, it goes from country to hillbilly to blues to rock to, it's insane. And, it, and she wrote everything. I have a lot of respect for Jennifer Nettles. She can sing and she writes. And this record is a weird, weird trip. But it's definitely worth listening at least once. Most people I know that I've made listen to this hate it. But I appreciate the diversity and her voice. People, people don't like her voice. But this is a weird record. But it's good. Um, so there you go. Jennifer Nettles. Her first. I don't know if that's her first solo record. She's got that one. She's got this one too. I haven't listened to yet. I think there's a third one somewhere. But I don't have it. Jim Brickman. Jim Brickman, that piano playing dude. You know who Jim Brickman is? You probably do. He's been around forever. The guy's a genius. He's made a 25-year career out of playing three-minute piano songs that cost basically nothing to record. I mean, he's a genius. You just need a piano and a good sound room and come up with little noodles and you got a record. But for a quarter of a century, guy's got a career. So there you go. Uh, I've only listened to some of these because they start blending together for me, but it's, he's, he's very talented, can't deny that, and uh, very smart. Uh, Jim Pederick, do you say Peterick or Pederick? One half of the songwriting team for Survivor. I bought this. I have an, a review up online somewhere on my YouTube channel. You can check that out if you care. Jimi Hendrix, what am I going to say about Jimi Hendrix? You don't know, right? Jimmy Jameson, the lead singer for Survivor. Uh, put out a solo record after the uh, Too Hot to Sleep record in the mid-90s, I think, 90, oh, 91, early 90s. Um, great songs on here are When Love Comes Down and If You Walk Away, which was co was written by Brian Adams, actually. So Jimmy Jameson, another Jimmy Jameson, I haven't listened to this yet. Another Jimmy Jameson, I haven't listened to this yet. Joe Cocker, I only bought this because it was produced by um, Richie Zito, and I figured there's some good stuff on here. I haven't listened to it yet. One Night of Sin, I have this because of When the Night Comes. Also, uh, J uh, Brian Adams and Diane Warren wrote that. Night Calls, I actually just put my review of this up on YouTube uh, yesterday. So, there's that. There's my Joe Cocker. Joey Tempest, the singer from Europe. Singer and, pre and, and, pre and uh, chief songwriter for Europe. Just wonderful. This was hard. I, it took me a while to get this one. Really, really nice though. This guy, I got a review of this up online also on my YouTube channel, so I'm not going to go on about that. But good stuff. This is also beautiful. I have to mention that uh, I love the song uh, If We Stay or If We Go and Lucky are just gorgeous, gorgeous songs. Screw this guy with all his talent. Uh, yeah, he signed it. I had him sign it. This is the album when I had... It was, I met him uh, at a backstage, and you could bring one thing for him to sign, and I was like, I'm bringing this one. It's great. This is a third solo record. I haven't listened to it yet. I don't know if it's any good. Eddie and the Cruisers. Okay, this is actually John Cafferty, who wrote and recorded all those songs, who is actually very, very talented. Uh, there's some good stuff on this one, but I, I prefer the follow-up, Eddie and the Cruisers 2. has better songs on it. Uh, just a Matter of Time. 
the song Just a Matter of Time, I completely blatantly ripped off when I wrote my very first song ever. So my very first song ever is basically Just a Matter of Time by John Cafferty. And there's a great song, uh, the NYC song. Love that song. Uh, and then there's another uh, John Cafferty thing. Then we get into, I can't say this guy's name right. John Elefante? John I don't know. Uh, I know him because he did uh, the song Young and Innocent on the St. Elmo's Fire soundtrack produced by David Foster. And I know he's done a lot of stuff. He was in Kansas, right? I know very, very, very little about John Elefante. Elefante. I don't know how to say it. Um, so forgive me. Uh, this is mostly, this one from what I understand is mostly Christian based. And I just kind of tune out when the songs are like that. Sorry, but I know the guy's got an exceptional, beautiful voice. Haven't listened to this yet. John Fogarty. Can't say nothing about him. You don't know. And then, oh, we end here on kind of a Han note because here's two John Hyatt records that I own that I've never listened to. So I don't know if those are any good. So there you go. There's uh, row four. Uh, all right. That's it. What would I suggest you listen to? Look up No Justice by uh, Harem Scarum. That's beautiful. Um, look up I Wish I Had a Girl by Henry Lee Summer. Awesome. We're Not Here for a Long Time, We're Here for a Good Time by Huey Lewis. That's great. Um, Insensitive by Jan Arden is a great song. Um, and just buy, just get the Brigade record by heart. It's really, really good. Hanson, listen, give Hanson a shot right now. Look up, um, oh God, look up, look up Go by Hanson. Look up. Uh, if only by Hanson. Look up Hey by Hanson. They're really, uh, um, The Walk, the song by Hanson. They're, they're really, really good. Okay, that's all I got. Uh, let's quickly plug my stuff. There's my website. <clears throat> There's the album cover of my latest record. Getting very good responses. So far, actually, nobody has crapped on it. So thank you for nobody crapping on it. Um, my record, again, has been compared to uh, I was shooting for Bad English, uh, Survivor. I got a little Danger Danger comparisons. Um, was trying to be Journey. Was trying to be um, Little Night Ranger. So there's a listening sampler on my YouTube. Give that a shot. Um, all right, that's all I got. I talked way too much because I'm supposed to be on vocal rest because my voice is screwed. So thank you all for watching and listening. And I wonder what was weird for you that I own. Don't know. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.